So uh, first off, would each of you like to introduce yourselves and your creative careers? Well, I'll, I'll just get started. Uh, my name is Maria Vitrinska and um, I'm a pianist. Uh, both, I perform both solo and in collaboration. And, uh, this project, uh, I'm really looking forward to collaborating with Ekaterina. Um, I also uh, teach, so I'm also a piano teacher. Um, yeah, and I just uh, love being involved in all kind of uh, artistic projects that usually involve music in some way or another. <laughs> Oh, uh, my name is Ekaterina Katrugina. Uh, usually I go by Katya. It makes everyone's life easier. Um, and I have a master's in opera from the University of Oklahoma. And then I got a performance certificate from uh, CU Boulder, so just, uh, just a few blocks away from me. And I really love uh, collaborative projects that are a little smaller. Uh, I mean, I love opera. I will always love opera, uh, but that's really not an option uh, right now. But small chamber things like what Maria and I are planning uh, are possible and it's still a good way of connecting with the community, uh, which is one of the big draws for me. Beautiful, that's amazing. Um, and how has COVID-19 affected each of your lives and livelihood? Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> about you, Katya? Go I ahead. I did issues. Come on. <laughs> um, oh, am I going first? Okay. Um, I actually, I had a day job um, uh, from which I and my entire staff got very epically laid off. Um, so that was really difficult for about a month and a half. Yeah, about a month and a half. Uh, but I, I was actually lucky. Uh, it's a W two. It was a W two job. Um, so I was eligible for unemployment, uh, and I was covered by uh, once the CARES Act act kicked in. It really made things easier. I will say for many of my my musician friends that are solely solely 1099 um, employees totally self-employed they haven't been as lucky in many ways um, so for me COVID I mean you know most of my students are in line um, and now I have time for hobbies <laughs> like watercolor because why not um, but it's um, it's definitely been an interesting time in terms of self-reflection and what it means to be a musician in this time um, and just how different people struggle with um, with all this because it's, you know, I, that first month was, I mean, you know, I just, I think I just cried and binge watched Grey's Anatomy for a whole month, uh, but I was lucky. And I know it's funny, it's terrible. Like it's, it's a terrible <laughs> guilty pleasure. Um, but the thing is like, I was lucky. And that's, and that's something that's really scary uh, that I hope we can improve on also as a community. Yeah, so uh, my situation is a little bit different since um, as a musician and uh, teacher, I kind of uh, fill out a few different and hats. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I took an income cut across every single one of those because well, some performances that were supposed to happen were canceled just due to uh, people gatherings being canceled. Um, and then uh, also in terms of teaching, yes, uh, as uh, Katya mentioned, that first month was, that was quite something, just uh, changing everything into online teaching, just the adjustment. And uh, I think uh, both my students and I, we, I think we went through it pretty well. But at some point, um, especially, uh, well, there are some uh, parents just don't want to continue online. So, uh, and there's nothing you can do <laughs> to convince them otherwise. Some of them I, I, I was able to show that, hey, this can work. Um, it's a little bit different, but we still can uh, keep the kids progressing and learning and just having that contact with the teacher is important in their lives and also having music to, uh, to turn to uh, in a time when 
they cannot be hanging out with friends. Uh, there's so much isolation going on. I think it's still very beneficial for them to have that outlet uh, to be able to play, to, to um, uh, express their emotions. Um, uh, and then even after a while, especially with the little ones, they just, they, they get tired of Zoom. <laughs> You can try as many activities and things uh, as you want to, but it just gets tiring. So um, in the long term, I, I, I do consider myself very lucky, very blessed in that uh, I was able to continue um, providing for myself. Uh, but yes, it definitely uh, has been a, a new world. <laughs> and just um, imagining where it's going to be going forward from now on is, is it's going to be different and uh, we just have to keep learning learning new skills uh coming up with new ideas and uh, just being always ready to adjust yeah the, the time of adjusting has been uh real <laughs> yeah. but i'm i'm glad to hear y'all are finding some silver linings that's that's really great to hear um so you've obviously been awarded a COVID-19 work project stipend. Um, would y'all just mind uh, telling me briefly about the project you have in mind and how it can promote connectivity in your neighborhood? I guess I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we planned this really well, can you tell? Um, so uh, Maria, I was actually the one that had the idea of doing something um, either in a retirement community, senior living, or something like that, uh, because those are, are our most at risk population. Um, they really, you know, uh, they can't be visited by family. Um, and music is just such a wonderful way to connect and because I work with a fair amount of um, younger singers they sing a lot of musical theater and just from having done a lot of concerts there's you can say like you can scream a bunch of high fast notes at people but at the end of the day um, they will love something like somewhere over the rainbow or just some really classic uh, golden era musical theater. It just makes everyone smile and it warms their hearts. Um, so we thought it would be a really nice way of uh, bringing music to the community. Yeah, and so just to describe a little bit more what we were thinking of, since uh, a lot of those facilities are not allowing anybody inside, uh, our idea is to basically uh, bring a sound system, bring a keyboard, and um, them under their own windows and uh, I think um, it, our hope is that it will not only kind of bring a, a sense of community even though everybody is still um, uh, just watching from their own room but I think there's something in this music that speaks to people um, deeper on a deeper level and uh, in times of difficulty even in previous times uh like for example during world war ii uh there was this famous uh, concert series uh, by uh madame myra hess and that was happening in england and uh, it was a, a, a source of strengthening for people and for community and i think um we really need to um i, I hope to bring that back and really to support uh, our uh elder population. That is such a beautiful idea. I love that. And have y'all done any of these uh, performances yet? I'm just wondering. Well, Not so yet. yeah, we are, uh, I have prior to COVID, <laughs> I, I, we have been doing uh, performances uh, with, with those houses. Right now, I think there's a lot of, um, uh, still the, they have difficult times dealing with, uh, illness and just protecting their population, but we are in contact with uh, a few facilities and uh, and working out the details how we're gonna make it happen in a healthy way that's safe for everybody involved. Right, amazing. That is so beautiful. I love it. Um, so finally, is there anything else you would like to share? <laughs> I 
Uh, well, I can I can go ahead. So um, I just wanted to actually say thank you to to the arts department at the city of Boulder because uh, this is uh, first of all not only I think it's great for for the community and for building the community, uh, but it also shows that uh, um, the city does care about uh, the arts. It cares about the artists' uh, livelihoods and that it's it's trying to help as much as they can and I, i'm just thankful for that absolutely it's um been really interesting to see how different communities have dealt with this and um i keep saying lucky but um we are so lucky to live in uh, boulder county which cares so much uh about the arts and its performing and visual artists it's um it's really, oh no, I'm gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry, it's fine. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it brings us hope um, that we are valued. <laughs> um, uh, because it's just, I mean, it's just been a difficult time. So uh, to be able to do something like this and get a grant, it's just, it's yeah. really amazing. And I am definitely very, very grateful. Of course, yeah. I, I've been so lucky to get to talk to everyone and it's been so amazing to hear about how people have, you know, not let the situation crush them, but they've found ways to make things work. And it's been really amazing to hear about all the projects. Um, so I'd like to thank you guys. Um, 